Greetings to you, Crocodile Army. I hope you're enjoying the political silly season as much as I am, and you're not letting it drive you too crazy. I suspect that most of you are in a similar boat to me. If you're under the age of 50 and left-leaning, you probably didn't support Biden in the primary, but you'll probably vote for him in the general election. I voted for Warren. You can't win them all. However, the second largest group of you is probably people who lean left but will not vote for Biden in the general election. I have many never Biden friends who literally just about every day post something negative against Biden or talk about how they're not voting for Biden for various reasons. These same people claim that they're not helping Trump because they're also posting bad things about Trump. So they say it's neither helping nor harming either candidate. I wish that were true, but it's not. In each state except two, the candidate with the most votes in the state gets all of that state's electoral votes. Let's consider votes for Biden plus one in this easy little math problem, votes for a third party or not voting at all is zero, and votes for Trump is minus one. If a third party gets a lot of interest, then of course that math can change, and I'll cover that later. In each state, if the math is positive, Biden wins, and if it's negative, Trump wins. I know quite a few never Biden friends and influencers, and their followers in every case skew heavily, if not almost entirely left with very few people voting for Trump. Many of them are very vocal about their decision to not vote for Biden. And every time Biden does something potentially negative of note, they gleefully amplify conservative attacks on him. In this scenario, they're addressing a group of zeros and ones and encouraging them to vote zero. And the net effect is helping Trump to win by sending that total lower. This is material assistance to Trump, even if you are also posting material against Trump, because most of the audience wasn't voting for Trump anyway. The excuse I hear when I call people out on it is that they don't live in a swing state, yet when I suggest that maybe they caveat their advice, they almost always decline. In fact, the Trump campaign should be paying them because they're providing a valuable service. There's a lot of bait that gets put out there by never Biden people that is often too tempting to pass up if you're concerned about the rise of fascism in this country. And it makes me want to argue with them sometimes. It takes one of two forms usually. The first is any variation of the both sides are the same argument. Most reasonably politically aware people are aware that this isn't true, even if they don't particularly like either candidate. From tax policy, to Supreme Court picks, to healthcare, to foreign policy, people who literally won't even concede that Biden will be at least marginally better and keep moving the goalposts about what better means when you're arguing with them are not worth arguing with at all because they clearly don't know much about the subject, to be honest. Another variation of this is, give me a reason I should vote for Biden and not just against Trump. This often seems innocent enough, and you can give policy positions that would be helpful to workers that are in the official platform. But this also ends up devolving into goalpost moving or simply falling back to a position of, well, I don't believe anything he says. Then the very next day, they'll ask the same question in a different way. Lucy always yanks the football away from Charlie Brown at the last second. There are quite a few people who believe the current parties don't entirely represent them, yet most people can name some politicians who advocate for policies that they really like. I think that having more parties would be fine, but I feel like the same people who think this is going to really help our politics are the same people who 10 years ago said that Americans would become much more humanist if we could just convince people to become less religious. We're much less religious than 10 years ago, yet we still might re-elect someone who is by most definitions a fascist. It's going to take a lot more than that, and to make the conditions favorable for a strong third party in the first place, we need to have ranked choice voting. That's where you vote for a first, second, and perhaps third choice candidate. So it's essentially an automatic runoff, with the people who voted for a candidate as their first choice who are not in the top two are then put into the second choice pool and so on. This method resulted in a narrow Democratic victory in a district in Maine for Congress in 2018, and this method will be used during the presidential election for Maine this year. Ranked choice voting is a state effort, so contact your state reps to get it on the ballot. Democrats tend to look at those efforts much more favorably, by the way. I hear quite a few different claims about various goals that being against everything Trump stands for but not voting for Biden will allegedly accomplish. Some think that not voting at all will be some sort of wake-up call and force people to look inward at how we got here. 
All I can think of when I hear this is the meme with Newman from Seinfeld where he yells something that the guy he's having lunch with just told him. And the punchline is always Newman saying, See? Nobody cares. I actually wish they were right, but I see no reason to believe that they are. Sending a message to the DNC is another popular one. More change has been put into motion than you think, both on the platform and at the congressional level. Don't fall for that 4D chess nonsense like, well, lesser of two evils is how we got here in the first place. No, we got here because a large number of people are fine with right-wing authoritarianism, and a Trump victory will increase it. We heard a lot of this same rhetoric from these same people in 2016 about how in 2020 somehow we'd get a better candidate, and look what happened. In fact, I think Hillary would probably have been a more effective president than Biden. But he has a much better chance of winning because a lot fewer people hate him than Hillary. To be fair, most of the never Biden people grudgingly accept that from a harm reduction perspective, it would be better for Biden to win than Trump. Most Republicans, even if they don't really like Trump very much, and even if they're to the right of Trump, know that he's their best shot at keeping up the anti-LGBT, anti-immigrant policies. So the right doesn't really have that problem. The left has that problem even though they know that Biden will reverse practically all of those policies. My advice is to engage when you can to encourage people to vote for Biden, especially if they're in a swing state like Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Florida, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Ohio, or Arizona. If you yourself are teetering on the edge of voting for Biden or not, and especially if you live in a swing state that I just mentioned, in a general election, there's only one litmus test that I use when voting. Which future looks better for the most people in this country, especially those whose lives hang in the balance? Which future will result in more influence in administration positions that can be filled by people left of Biden and influence the party and the country to the left as boomer numbers who like candidates like Biden drop? Otherwise, we have four more years of fighting Trump and zero chance of progress. We must defeat Trump to ensure that Trumpism will not be a path to power again.